Welcome to our Hive Studios. Christmas is the hottest season of year for retailers, so it's all about eye-catching window displays, how to stand out from the crowd, what makes a great Christmas window display. With me in the studio is Deborah Flowerday, visual merchandiser, style consultant, and associate lecturer at the University of the Arts London. She has worked with the v and Estee Lauder, Mary Quant, and Tate Gallery, to name but a few. Let's welcome in her. Good morning, Debbie, and thank you so much for being with us today. And thank you for asking me. It's lovely to be here in this lovely little studio. Mm. <laughs> uh, what makes a great Christmas uh, window display? How do visual merchandisers come up with all these brilliant ideas? Well, Christmas windows, normally, or any scheme, uh, normally they have to um, prepare or start having ideas or more or less finish um, round about kind of June time. So um, a lot of uh, uh, inspiration comes from trends, different trends, um, lots of research and looking at what other stores have done in the past and looking to successful stores. Um, but I think the main thing is, is for the smaller uh, businesses is to really work with your brand. So, for example, if you come to the uh, kind of uh, the, the pure exhibition, for example, uh, you might kind of purchase a collection which is inspiring, which you can then um, kind of use that collection to to inspire you for your window scheme. So you have that nice collaboration with the merchandise and the window scheme. You have been in the business for quite a few years. What's uh, what are the main changes that you notice in terms of evolution for Christmas displays in particular? Um, well, there's big changes. I think stores like Finch and Selfridges that do a great job, very on trend, they've kind of come away from that traditional Christmas window where you have all the children turn up and it's Disney or whatever. So that's kind of changed. Um, uh, the, the luxury brands, I think, are really up their game and they're doing some, some great uh, things. But I think the high street needs to kind of up their game a little bit. I think it hasn't really changed that much. Um, and again, you know, I always say, don't always do Christmas. We know it's Christmas, so you don't have to do the green and red. <laughs> think outside the box. So look at your brand. If you've got, um, if you've purchased in fashion and amazing pieces for your Christmas window, then work with that so that, for instance, what I'm wearing, for instance, you might think I'm going to do massive, huge gold roses or something. And, you know, we know it's Christmas. Um, so I think we need to push ourselves a bit more. And also, uh, when it comes to fashion, for example, we don't, we don't dress mannequins how we dress. It used to be, and I think it still should be, much more kind of over the top to inspire people. So when they look at a mannequin, they say, wow, that's a fantastic outfit. I might not wear all of that, but so it's really, we've got to bring back that fantasy, uh, which I think we have lost. Much like back. celebrity styling. <laughs> They're always an inspiration to so many people, isn't it? Because yes. they're always like over the top, but they do have professionals. <laughs> well, that's but that, that's another thing, you know, really you have to employ a professional and good dresses are very hard to find now, but they are so important, yeah, a part of all. And um, for instance, we have on the screen Harrods, uh, they, they have a, a partnership this year with, uh, with Dior and everyone is like talking about it. What makes a good uh, partnership for visual merchandising in particular? I think it's complete collaboration. Um, uh, you know, when I was in this, you know, working in the industry uh, full time, we would have meetings like with the buyers, we knew what was happening and that collaboration with everybody. But I think the thing with Harris, that's quite exceptional because it's been taken over, the whole thing's been done by um, Dior. And I was in Paris last week and it's exactly the same. They're the windows who kind of really have gone completely over the top. It's fantastic. The budgets must be incredible. Um, and I'm not sure whether their team worked, they must have worked hand in hand together, but I think Dior probably would have done, in, controlled all the dressing and, the, and everything because they have you know, taken over a huge part of Harrods. For retailers with a smaller budget, what can they do to, to make the most of it? I think the smaller um, business have really got to look at um, what, they, what they're going to put in the window for Christmas and work with that. Don't, if you're putting something in the window which is um, to the colours, make sure the colours work together. So if you're, the colours for your, uh, your merchandise is 
not necessarily red, it might be fuchsia, lovely colours. Think about, you know, what can I use? You could, there's so many props that can be made very cheaply and easily, but as long as you have that lovely cohesion and really good dressing, and if you don't know, you know, how to, how to dress, employ a visual merchandiser. You know, don't try doing it yourself um, because, you, you know, we have two seconds for the customers to recognize, to see the window and it's, it's the face of your store. And if you get it wrong, it, it's, it's, it's all about you, your own show. So the windows are the most important thing in, you know, in your business. Thank you so much, Debbie, for thank you very being much. with us uh, this thank morning. You. And thank you for watching.